Good morning, everyone. It's Tuesday, May 12th. Today is Lag Omer, yay. Uh, Lag Omer is known as a uh, sort of joyous day on the calendar. <clears throat> it's the day when we were in Yeshiva, we would get to miss all our classes so we can go out and play ball in the park. And uh, of course, according to the tradition, this is the day that the plague of Rabbi Akiva's students when it ceased, and therefore it became a day of celebration. We never didn't say Tachnon today, and uh, a number of other ways to note. Bonfires, uh, it was kind of unusual to watch the video from Meron in northern Israel last night where there were very, very few people, obviously because of what's going on. Uh, but it's day number 33 in the Omer. That's a day when we're allowed to uh, shave again, haircuts, etc., listen to music again. Uh, though, if anybody out there knows how to give a haircut, with the exception of Goldie, who does know, uh, please let me know because, you know, I'm in dire need of a haircut, as are many. But, you know, what? this is just, these should be our, these should be our problems. Uh, the number 33, for those who are counting, it's just too easy, so I don't even have to mention. But um, if you, uh, many, many famous number 33s, a uh, great, great number that we have in the Omer. Please continue to daven for Rufu Shlema, for Ivan Soba, Mordechai, Ben Elka, Robert Rafal Zev, Ben Rickel, and Gittel Bas Sara, and all those who need our prayers, all those who need refuas, and uh, from all sides of the spectrum, from shul life. I had sad news this morning, learning that uh, Michael Dardick, his father, passed away. Again, the Shem should have an aliyah, and we should have only simchas in shul, and we'll send the shiv information as soon as we know. And completely in the circle and cycle of life, uh, we want to wish a mazel tov to Meirav and Jonathan Bannett on the birth of their daughter, Noah Miriam. Noah Miriam's Noah Miriam, who's comes into this world with two very active older brothers, mazel tov. And we can't wait to meet her in person and to see everyone back in shul. Uh, today, the sponsor for the Dvar Torah, Jeffrey and Gail Toll. Uh, today, well, actually this weekend, this Shabbos, the 50th yard site was the 50th yard site for Avram Yeshua ben Shmuel. That's Gail's grandfather. So that's Claire's father. Those don't know that Claire is Claire, Claire, married to Morris Klicklick, is, is Gail's mother. So this is Gail's grandfather, Avram Yeshua ben Shmuel, the 50th yard site. Appropriate that we're doing it this week because this week we read Bahar and Bechukosai, where we read about the Jubilee year, 50 years. So again, the Shema should have an Aliyah, and we should only celebrate Simchas in Shul. The mission I'd like to discuss this morning, continuing in the fourth chapter, is um, in Parak Dalid, <clears throat> in a very, very serious Mishnah, Mishnah Hay. And one of the things that we have to contend with always as a Jewish nation, as a community, but perhaps even more so during this very unusual period. Rabbi Yochanan ben Brok Omer, Kol mechala al shem shamayim b'seser nifra'en mimenu begoli, el chad shogeg v'echad mezid b'chilol Hashem. Whoever desecrates the name of heaven in secret, they will exact punishment from him in public. Unintentional and intentional both are alike regarding Chilol Hashem. Now, this is a term that we've heard a lot. It's been thrown at us for many, many, many years, perhaps even as youngsters uh, when we were studying at the earliest of ages, when perhaps you were doing something or carrying on a certain way and someone said to you, you have to stop doing that, it's a Chilol Hashem. Chilol Hashem, desecration of Hashem's name. And what it means is, is that like it or not, people are going to judge us by what we do or what they think we do. So we're held to a higher standard. It's not fair, perhaps. Okay, but that's, you know, that's life. What are you going to do? But we are required to make sure that nothing we do will lead other people in the world to look at us and say, oh, look at those people. Look at what they're doing. And there's no shortage of incidents like that. And especially now. Especially now when we're trying to maintain a community standard and we're trying to uh, flatten the curve and keep it flat till we know that we can come back and go back to things as sort of how they were, but it's never going to be how they were. But we, the last thing we want to do is fall into the trap of Chil Hashem. We don't want people to say, oh, what kind of religion is that? Look how these people are. Or look, these people act so devout, so religious when they daven, but if you ever do business with them, they cheat you left and right. That's a Chil Hashem. Or people who say, oh, well, the community has one standard. I'm going to do whatever I want. That's a chil Hashem. We have, we have to give a good name, um, which is, uh, I'll, I'll give you an innocuous example. Um, should I ever, well, when I used to go to the supermarket, and my kids will tell you that uh, it's, it's, it's pretty funny, but it's like a, you know, Mishigas of mine, but it's not a Mishigas, is that when I go to the supermarket, 
and um, you know, what do you do? You, you, you buy your groceries, you have your cart, you bring them back to your car. What do you do with the cart? So a lot of people just kind of leave the cart there. And there's nothing that's perhaps more annoying than trying to find a good spot only to find that there's three shopping carts there. So do you actually get out of the car and move them or do you look for a different spot? What do you do? So when I go shopping, I make sure, I make darn sure to put my shopping cart back where it belongs in the little parking area for the shopping carts or even to the front of the store if it means having to walk back. Why? Because people see me with a kippah on. And they see you with a yarmulke and they're going to say, oh, look, that's a nice thing that you're doing. Because if you didn't do it, they're going to say, oh, look at those Jews. They don't care. They dent my car with their shopping carts. And that's such a innocuous, minor example. But if you magnify that by so many times, Mishnah tells us that even if you do it by accident, even if you do it unintentionally, and even if you do it in private, what's going to happen? It's going to be exposed. It's going to be paid back. Punishment will be exacted in public. On the cover of the New York Times. In the news. In the tweets of political officials. That's where you're going to be found. And that's not a place where we want to be found. We don't want to even be in a position where people will assume you're doing something true or not. So our job, and particularly during this time, is to be Makadesh Shem Shemayim, to sanctify the name of heaven, to glorify the name of God, that people will look at us and say, wow, look at that nation, look at those people, look at that community. That's how we should behave. We want to emulate their behavior. We want to be like them, as opposed to, God forbid, the opposite. So as we trudge on and, and we continue through this uh, very, very difficult period, and sometimes Sanctifying God's name is not the easiest thing to do. Always remember that someone is looking, someone is watching, and it's our job to always set the best example. I hope everyone has a wonderful day, and a, we'll see you again tomorrow.